Hey everybody, this is Larry. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know how you're doing this problem. I'm gonna solve it live right about now. Cool. Uh, 287, find a duplicate number. Uh, given an array nums containing n plus 1 integers, where each integer is between 1 and n, inclusive, prove that at least one duplicate number makes, must exist. Assume that there's only one duplicate number, find the duplicate number. Okay. I mean, the proof is just pigeonhole, right? Um, but. Oh, of one extra space. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, I've, this is this the classic? Uh, just the sum. Uh, sum minus. Uh, was it? N plus. Uh, well, n minus one. So. One over two, uh, and then just this, right? And that's the other one as well, I guess. All right, let's submit. Oh, no. Oh, at least... I might have misunderstood this form. Okay, so it is a little bit more interesting. Because <laughs> uh, you could have multiple typical numbers, I see. Uh, huh. Because I thought it was just... Okay. Each... Okay. Oh, I missed this part of the note. Okay. Hmm, so how would I do it then? Also, the examples are kind of misleading. In fact, you know, uh, congrats for f being fooled. Um, okay, let me think about it again then. Uh, hmm. So the hard part is obviously doing an O of 1 space and O of n times, uh, or just n log n maybe. And that's an n square. Um, hmm. Hmm. Hey, Primasters, how are you doing? Uh, good to see you as well. It's been a little bit. <laughs> Hope you had a good week. Uh, hmm. I mean, there's definitely at least one duplicate number. And I thought it was, I, I thought the other way would have been way too easy. But, uh, but I was like, okay, whatever. I miss, I miss, hmm. How do you do? I mean, yeah, if you use like a hash table or something like that, uh, it's easy. If you Also, if you can modify the array, then you could sort and then binary sort. Sort and just look at adjacent uh, uh, adjacent cells, uh, but because you can't do either, uh, how would you? Hmm. There's some like principle that I could figure out. Oh, mm, I guess the other constraint is that it is a number from one to n. So, what, the, what does that mean? That means that if you walk the DAG or walk the permutation cycle, you will. Uh, hmm. You will find a cycle with hmm. I mean I'm also I think in my head I was trying to construct an inverse graph of some sort. Um but but that is not gonna be an O of one, so hmm. 
and you can't modify it away, so you can do something hacky. <laughs> but um, like this goes to three. This goes to three. This goes to forward. And you get like this. Uh, what's it called? Or the row function. Does that help? Mm, I mean, it's still you. Sp you still need to store more space stuff. So I can't figure it out. And there is an n square permutation based algorithm, but uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> but, uh, hmm. Man, having a lot of troubles with mediums today. Uh, I guess to be to be fair, if this was on a contest, then probably the all oh, one extra space it would be hard to enforce so that's why these kind of things don't show up but i could see that for an interview that, but then also for an interview the um a lot of these things are a little weird for these artificial constraints where they want you to think of exactly one answer but hmm. I guess you could bind every search. Maybe that's the way they want you to do it, but I would. Uh, and that'll be n log n, and that should work because it's between 1 and n, so you just go through the array, but like, okay, how many numbers are higher than the target? And then if it, if it is, you go to, so you go to the half that has uh, more number than is necessary. Okay, let's do that then. Uh, but of course, there's always going to be um, there's always going to be uh, which we call it off by one potential, because <laughs> I'm just bad at binary search. Uh, yeah, you cannot modify the array, so uh, so that's why you can constrain. But I think binary search is right. Um, it's one of those things where uh, when you feel it's right, it's probably right. Uh, but yeah, hmm. it's been a, actually it's been a little bit since I've done binary search. So and you still tell it to go to n. Uh, actually, you let me find my. So yeah, okay. So now we, let's say we have a helper function, just called count uh, of some target x, let's call it target. And then uh, now we can um, go num and nums uh, if, I guess we could just do, oh, well, if num is, Wait, you know, you goes to target maybe. Uh, this that's not true. We want to return whether C is. Um, so given a number. Actually, let's just let's just do smaller than them. Okay. If the number is smaller than or you goes to the target. And then now we can check um, the number is equals to target. Yeah, okay. That should be right. 
uh, so I'm a little slow on the binary search usually, but and now you have a wild head is if top of mid I have to uh, double check the variant in a second uh, and then now just return left okay because if, if this is true so we wanted to go from force to true um, so actually we want this to be this okay Oh. So this should be mostly right, it's just I'm going to have issues of off i1s by equal and less than and stuff, so that's the stuff that I'm uh, a little bit worried about. Uh, and yeah, hmm. Time limit exceeds comes up when uh, when that happens. Mm. Okay. So let's say we start at to see well. Oh. Um yeah, actually we start one one to end. That's the first thing, because we we would never need zero. But um, I don't think that's it. Uh, uh, so what's count of zero? Count of one would return one. That's four. And then two would return three, so that's true. Okay, I mean, so I think this function is right. So I'm doing something weird here, maybe. Oh, I don't have left and right. Ah, uh, sorry, that's that's probably why. It's because my terminology is inconsistent. You. Sometimes I use head and left, and sometimes I use left and right for the terminology, uh, and that's kind of what's been screwing me. That's just a silly mistake, coming from inconsistency. Uh, okay. I mean, it's wrong, but at least it's better. Uh, Before, why is that's right? Where four returns five, so it becomes true, right? If this is true, then head is you. Oh, hmm, right. did I screw up the math? This is true, okay. Uh, yeah, let's submit this. Cool. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit slow somehow. Sorry, that was a little bit tiring. Um, how long did I end up spending on this? I spent about 14 minutes, which I guess it's okay. I mean, probably a little bit on the slow side, to be honest. But uh, maybe I'm just a little tired today. That's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> no, but... um. Okay, so this that's uh, actually uh, I like this problem. It's a cute problem on binary search that I 
I don't know. I, I think I got stuck a little bit in my initial. What the hell? Sorry, my my shredder just randomly turned itself on and it scared the heck out of me. But uh, <laughs> um, my crazy ghost shredder from anyway. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, because I so I think I was stuck a little bit on that mindset of uh, every number is from one to n um, versus uh, this particular thing where it could be repeated more than once. I just kind of uh, didn't think about it uh, sufficiently in that way. Um, and that's kind of, uh, yeah, what happened there. I'm all, hmm, you have to be a little bit better about it. This. But uh, but yeah, but in the end, it is binary search uh, from that probably because of uh, pigeonhole uh, principle, and you can kind of think about it as um, so that you know, let's say you uh, start with the number n. Uh, well, this n is going to always be true because, uh, and this is what I mean. Uh, the number of numbers that are less than n will always be true because well. That's by definition of the pigeonhole. Uh, so then now that you try n over 2, say, uh, and if if you have less than less than or equal to uh, n over 2 numbers, that means that at, uh, that means that uh, it's on the Yeah, if you have less than or equal to that, that means that uh maybe I could draw this in a little bit better way. Um oops. Like given that, uh you want to count say the number of numbers that are less than two. Uh and in a way, uh you're 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 selecting a sub array of this problem, uh where you're like, okay, that that's that's just I mean, I'm counting it because the order doesn't matter, and also the numbers don't really matter per se for a given count. But uh, let's say you only select the numbers that are equal or less than two. Uh, so this is your subarray, uh, and in this case, um, you return three elements. And because you're looking, because of kind of the properties inherent in this problem, uh, three is great, bigger than two, obviously. But that means that uh, that means that there is a du duplicate duplicate element uh, here, right? Uh, as a result, uh, and that's kind of the binary search value. So then, now that you know it's between one and two, so then now you search for one and one. Here you're like, okay, well, there, there's only one element, and one is not. I don't know if that's the way. But it's not. Uh, oops, not two, but it's not uh, bigger than one. So there's only one element here. So. Uh, so it is not possible that duplicate element is here. Uh, and from that, uh, you create a binary search uh, because uh, from this, you you, uh, you can note that uh, now from in the beginning, it'll be like you, you, uh, you'll see the Boolean kind of uh, array where like it goes from zero, you know, false to true and then there's a transition somewhere and, and after that is monotonic right um so that's kind of how i thought about it uh but it's kind of a little bit tricky which is what makes it fun uh because it definitely feels like a way to use binary search that uh in forces you to incorporate a number of things together in a way that uh um i just didn't never well, i wouldn't say never but like to, that i didn't think about until Kind of really pressed upon, which is kind of cool. Um, I kind of feel like I'm discovering something, as I usually say. Um, and obviously, that is only necessary because all of these constraints, uh, particularly uh, the, the not modifying a wave part, uh, I think uh, with how many comment can you sort it? Uh, and yeah, like it's going to be it generally in a programming contest is very hard to enforce to uh, only use extra all one extra space. Uh, so you probably can do O of n space uh, and no of n space then you just sort it and then you look at adjacent elements which makes it like trivial uh, you could do it in two lines of code or three lines of code or whatever um, but in this case it makes it uh, kind of interesting but uh, and as a result possibly 
and then uh, uh, an okay interview question though it is kind of hard but um, but it, again you know in an interview you should work with your interviewer to kind of work through kind of assumptions and just um, talk through it right and sometimes they give you a little bit of hints along the way so you know you're not uh, frozen out so uh, but yeah but otherwise a pretty cute problem uh, and I'm taking a longer than I would have imagined but uh, but yeah if the interviewer uh, adding constraints but but I think like the more trivial things are really uh, really basic so I would definitely uh, practice that but and even binary search is pretty straightforward uh, but there's something to kind of think I mean binary search by itself is very straightforward but for this particular problem it's you know uh, you will have to kind of really think about it uh, but yeah yeah, and during the interview, the interviewer can kind of start you off with like a really, um, you know, like no constraints, and then you could kind of just constrain it, or the interviewer can add constraints along the way to kind of make it more interesting for you. Um, but yeah, I actually like this one. I dig it.